Mm -hmm. All right, welcome back. It is uh, the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Just before we move on to uh, off the press, just a bit of um, retraction. Actually, the ASO striker, it was actually the military men uh, who allegedly disrupted protesting students in Ondosa. Let me just give you a complete background of the story. Now, some military men uh, yesterday disrupted the protest embarked upon by joint students of public universities in Ondo State over the prolonged strike of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU. Now, the angry students started the protest on Monday and barricaded the Akure Elisha Expressway in Akure, the state capital, preventing vehicle and movements and caused traffic logjam for several hours. So the right information, it was actually the army, uh, the military who shot at the students and not um, the police. So we move on to Off the Press. Merci. Well, uh, on, on Off the Press, we have Tunde Kualawale who joins the conversation this morning. And uh, Tunde, it's good to have you join us this morning on The Breakfast. Thanks for having me. All right. We start off with the Nigerian Tribune. On the Nigerian Tribune, uh, we pay attention to the top captioned or top story, if you like to put. 10 days to presidential primaries, sadden PDP leaders weigh fresh option. <laughs> I like what's going to happen. I mean, it's going to be a lot of drama. That's mm. what I anticipate before we get to the election date. So a lot will happen. 10 days to pr presidential primaries. Southern PDP leaders weigh fresh options. What could that be? I'm sure you want to find out. You also have presidency to NEF. You wallow in delusional arrogance over Nigerians' existence. That is so much. And Deborah, suspects cannot be tried for mere breach of public peace. Uh, that's what the NBA is quoted to say. Anyway, from that, you have nine bodies recovered at scene of Kanu explosion. And gunmen list 10 Anambra local government areas for attack. Hmm. This is not a threat to mm. national security. This is not a challenge to the chief, uh, uh, you know, chief commander of the Federal Republic. Of, am I correct? I mean, try to put me on because I'm trying to say that whoever is controlling the um, security the, architecture, the you, should, security, you should be an embarrassment. Officer. Exactly. Mm. Gunmen list 10 Anambra local governments for attack. <laughs> so much audacity. Wow. Convention. Confusion persists over a delegate's election as APC inaugurates panel. I am not running to be president, AFDB president Adeshina, and 2023 US vows to impose visa restriction on promoters of violence. Okay, we've heard a lot of that. Stop IPUP from using your platform to incite violence, federal government tells Facebook. Really? Okay. These are the headlines on the Nigerian Tribune. All right, uh, we'll move away from that to the Daily Independent. Well, the lead story, private insurer's accounts at risk as NPF Mall's insurance outfit. Uh, two riders there, stakeholders say it's unnecessary, it won't uh, be run as a business. May not obey NICOM regulations, one insurance is complex. More stories on the front page of the Daily Independent. Gunmen are list nine Anambra council areas for a talk. Wow. I won't retire from politics until I'm president. Tinubu Nema recovers nine bodies from Kano explosion site. Nigeria requires $11 trillion to close infrastructure gap. That's according to experts. NDLEA arrests drug baroness uh, Seals Mansion drug bank or bonks in worry convention pdp in confusion over venue adjust dates of primaries governor tom lobbies jonathan to attend convention why nigeria needs urgent all-round resetting by fire me uh, presidency criticizes northern elders over the divisive statement uh, deborah nba condemns killing postponed Socrates conference FG to Facebook, stop IPOP from using your platform to incite violence. Those are all of the stories on the front page of the Daily Independent. 
Well, we need to move away from the daily independent newspaper this morning and check out all the papers available uh, to us by Pepe, by the newspaper vendor. You will also have uh, The Nation. Yeah, The Nation and The Punch. All right. So, so on The Nation presidential governorship primaries, uh, APC begins process. That's what you find as boldly written. Federal government puts Facebook on the watch over iPubs. <laughs> wow. But, okay, I will leave that to fly. Support for separate is unacceptable. And again, you have Amata Kun's success max restructuring imperative, says Bauchi governor. Away from that, you have delegate selection tomorrow. Governorship candidate shadow poll on Friday. Soldiers chase away protesting students in Akure. And you also have EFCC relocates arrested accountant general. Why? This Maybe to why. another prison. Huh? Maybe to another prison. Huh? Say Maybe again? to another prison. Why? Maybe, maybe his life is under threat. I really don't know how these things work. Nine die, many injured in Kano gas explosion. Deborah and BA shaves Sokoto conference. These are the headlines this morning you find on The Nation. And just before we move away, Amoteko success makes restructuring imperative, says Bauchi governor. All right, uh, the last paper we're reviewing this morning is The Punch. The lead story for this morning camp, that's the Christian Association of Nigeria Plateau, Benway Church's adamant insist on Sunday protests. Uh, with some writers that ignore governor's warnings against demonstrations, seek justice for Deborah. No street protests say Plateau Bono government ever fire wants troublemakers. NBA slams Tambo wants a murder charge for suspects. Police advice can. Jet A1 Airlines marketers uh, 480 Nepal liter supply deal crashes. Products sells for 612 Nepal liter. Just above the masthead, abductees families vow to stop Abuja Kaduna train resumption. Poly lecturers plan indefinite strike from June. Asu Knox Mwajuba. EFCC arrest ex speaker 8A. Over 240 million NDDC contract. Federal government fails to allocate over 1,300 megawatts. Blackout looms. Nigeria's fourth quarter trade deficit rose by 175% heat, $764 million. That's according to the CBN. Nine killed in Kano, police residents disagree on explosion. NCAA warns pilots airlines over hazardous weather. Alpha dismembers female customer, police recover body parts. Choose female deputies, Aisha Buhari tells presidential aspirant. And those are the bulk of the stories on the Pan Chinese paper this morning. Tunde Kola Wale, it's good to have you join us this morning on The Breakfast. Thank you for having me. It's all right. Tunde Kola Wale is a legal practitioner. We'd like to share your thoughts on the headlines. I mean, there are a lot of headlines, but I start off with the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, looking at the Nigerian Tribune, 10 days to presidential primaries, certain PDP leaders weigh fresh options. What do you make of all of this? Well, about a uh, few days ago, uh, one of the members of the Board of Trustees of the PDP addressed an alarm that um, the PDP holding convention very close to that of the APC and uh, in the same area, at the same uh, uh, town or city, Abuja, is not ideal for the party. That was a chief for the judge. And he has advised the PDP to move its uh, convention to Lagos, where he said uh, the environment will be more conducive, hotel accommodation not a challenge, and transportation easy to access. It is not impossible that it is this alarm that was made by chief for the judge 
that has now influenced the competition that is said to now uh, exist in the PDP with regards to the convention that we intend to hold. But my take on that is that um, when you are holding a very weak convention, like that of the PDP or that of the APC and other, you need to take into consideration the challenges of logistics so as to have an effective for, uh, convention. It is not too late for the PDP to correct or find solutions to some of the problems that they might be having with regards to this convention, and then uh, take appropriate action so that the party can have a very successful convention. Because a lot of Nigerians are looking forward to the PDP and uh, what it is going to do from 2023 20, election. Uh, without an option to the APC, the country could not stop, I mean, cannot decide to be moving forward politically or to be able to choose where certain candidates and certain persons are filled by the other leading parties. And those parties, or I mean, those candidates haven't met the expectations of Nigeria. It is in our general interest as a people that the PDP is able to get its act together and be able to stand as a credible alternative for the APC. All right, uh, Tinekola Oli, let, let's stay with uh, the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, Deborah uh, Samuel's uh, death is still uh, making headlines in different angles by the day. But let's take it the way the Nigerian Tribune captions it. Uh, the NBA is saying that um, suspects can't be tried for mere breach of public peace. I'm trying to understand all of that. Uh, there's an issue of um, alleged murder here, and uh, there are also talks of... Um, breach of public peace. I mean, what gives here, really, Barrister Kolawale? Well, I have been reading most of the things um, that uh, have been published on the border. And the notes that we are getting from Sokoto State, especially from the government of Sokoto State, is very, very discomforting. Before the MDA also took its decision to so, postpone its convention, I mean, uh, yeah, to postpone this uh, uh, conference, the tune coming from the NBA wasn't reassuring at all. The truth of the matter is that it does, it does appear that the government of Sokoto State is not ready to prosecute those who have been alleged to have killed this young lady. For God's sake, the crime that has been committed with the killing of that lady is murder. And then, uh, defacing of a dead body. That is, uh, they, after they've killed the lady, they put uh, gasoline on her and burnt her body. You are not supposed to do that in a decent society. So, but like it has happened in the past, history seems to be repeating itself. Go and check your history, whether it's that of Akaluka or that of uh, a one lady who was killed, I think, sometimes uh, uh, long ago, a teacher in Bauchi who tried to stop some students from um, kind of uh, uh, cheating in the public exam. And then she was run immediately as head and accused of the blasphemy and set her place by her own student. None of those blasphemous cases where people have been killed have been prosecuted diligently. Too many times, the government to set the people uh, free. It is for this reason that um, the MD has listened to the word of wisdom not to be seen, to be kind of um, uncertain with a government uh, like that of a uh, Secretary of State that is not ready to do the needful concerning the death of the innocent crime that has been committed with regards to this Deborah's uh, uh, case. The withdrawal, the postponement of the convention will send a proper signal to the Kosokoto state government and also to the communities, the religious fundamentalists who have um, been demonstrating and insisting 
that those who have been allowed to have committed this crime should be set uh, free. Ironically, he will recollect that there is still a boy, a young boy, who was alleged to have um, posted blasphemous uh, uh, things on his was up and do, and then he was promptly arrested by the Ishma, that is the Islamic police, in Kano, and take it to a Sharia court. He has been convicted for blasphemy. I think his case is now before the Court of Appeal and all that. Governments that are eager to arrest people who are said to have committed blasphemy and then prosecute them will also be the one that those who commit this kind of crime, this egregious crime of killing a lady who has been alleged to commit a, a blasphemy and then go to court and file wishy washy complaints against those uh, persons. Of course, the killing of a human being, the facing of dead body, is totally different from that of the servant of public peace. The so-called state government must be made to be the needful with regards to the killing of the poor. Secondly, you and I will know that in the northern part of the country, they are operating three systems of law. They have the Sharia, they have the penal code, and then in some parts, you have uh, the common law. Uh, and no criminal code that is applied with regard to crimes that are committed in the society. And then in Southern Nigeria, we use the criminal code and the common law. For God's sake, Nigeria is supposed to be a secular state in which the systems of the different systems of law that are being used in different parts of the country must not to have arisen at all. Uh, more, Gide Johnson, uh, let's move yeah. away from that now and look at the daily right. independent. Uh, on right. the Daily Independent, you have a part of the story that talks about the federal government to Facebook saying, stop IPOP from using your platform to incite violence. Do you think that this is rational? Do you um, also expect this from the federal government? Should the federal government be engaging with Facebook or should the federal government be engaging with these persons who are displeased and who have also put out their concerns as regards why they're asking for a federal republic or self-governance? Well, while I do agree that some people abuse the social media and um, the abuse of the social media is a tragedy. Tragedy in the sense that uh, I consider the social media as a democratizing media. It is a media that has put information, platforms, opportunities in the hands of the ordinary person all over the world. The social media is there for a platform to cherish for people that use it. But in spite of that, I'm not too sure that the threat that the federal government is always issuing or dishing to some of the social media like the Twitter, like Facebook and what have you. I'm not too sure that is the appropriate step to take. When you look at Facebook, for example, it has given us the opportunity to complain, to report, to make uh, uh, even block certain passwords whose messages we don't want to see on our platform. Why don't the federal government explore all those opportunities for of reporting those who are abusing the social media, whether it's the iPod or some other good society, rather than issuing threats to them? If after you have reported a iPod to Facebook that they are abusing uh, the platform, and then the Facebook people refuse to take care of whatever necessary, they have to have taken. And you can be using threat as the federal government is doing now. So this is like a putting the cat before the horse. The need food should be done. Take the right step forward. And then when you don't get the right result, then you can begin to take some other measures. Furthermore, I want to appeal to all those people who are using the social media that we need to be careful not to play into the hands of those who want to put one form of restriction or the other, or who want to start a curtailing the opportunity that the social media has given us by posting things that are ordinarily not to do, by posting things that can endanger public peace, by posting things that irritate not just the responsibility of individuals, but also their conscience. Because when we allow people, when we allow people in government to begin to regulate the social media, 
the opportunity, the democratizing opportunity that that media have given us will be lost and may not be recovered again for a very, very long time to come. All right, uh, Barrister Kolawale, let's uh, take a look at the Punch newspaper. I just want you to comment on this particular story. Uh, Still on Deborah, you know, Khan, the lead story, Khan, Plato, Binui, uh, churches, adamant, insist on Sunday protest. Uh, in as much as Plato State and the governor of Amboni State, even El Rafai, have warned um, residents not to embark on street protests. Uh, Khan and Plato, uh, in Plato and Binui, are insisting they'll protest on Sunday. What are your thoughts? Well, uh I am in support of the protest. I've only said it and she has to remember that in all decent society, in all democratic society, the right of protest is always guaranteed. And here in Nigeria too, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 has amended, amply guarantees the freedom to protest without hindrance in any part of the country. When people are embarking on protest, what the government at the state level, whether at the local government level, whether at the federal level, are supposed to do is to provide security for those who are protesting and make sure that the protest is not attacked by hoodlums or infiltrated by hoodlums. And if you don't allow people to protest, the signals you are sending out is that when you beat a child, the child is not supposed to cry. Whereas, in all different societies, if you don't go to court to ventilate your grievances, if you don't go to the community level, maybe the other palace, the churches, the mosque, and what have you, to solve problems, to solve issues, and what have you, one of the other steps, and one of the most, the one of even stronger steps than even going to court, is to go onto the street and let the people, the very people in government, who have not done what you expect them to do, to know where the shoe is sent to you. So we must um, encourage the culture of protest, peaceful protest, and also guarantee that protests are not uh, attacked by Udron when people embark them, uh, on them. In the case of uh, ANPP, uh, first of the Inspector General of Police, the Court of Appeal has amply said that, look, the right of protest is a fundamental human right. I cannot be taken away from any Nigerian in any part of the country, no matter what the circumstances uh, are. All right, uh, the Daily Independent, uh, Baris Akola Ali, uh, let's uh, move to that paper. Uh, just away from the banner headline, there is a story uh, also making headlines there. Gunmen uh, list uh, nine Anambra Council areas for attack. This time around, they're actually warning ahead of time uh, areas they you know, will be attacking in that particular state. Uh, what does all of that tell you? Well, uh, what is going on in the southeast today uh, pains me a lot. Uh, one is not uh, happy with what is going on in there. Uh, whether they be gunmen, whether they be IPOP, or any of these other splinter goods. The truth of the matter is that um, the properties that have been destroyed may look like nearly ordinary uh, government properties or public properties. But when you look critically about those, I mean, with regard to those infrastructures, you will find out that those infrastructures are designed to serve the general public. And when infrastructure are designed to serve the general public and you are destroying them, what you are doing is creating hardship for your people. So, if you say you are struggling for the independence of your people, for them to have life more abundant, for them not to suffer any deprivation, whether political, economic, or social, or culturally, and all that, then you don't start destroying the infrastructure upon which a society is built. You don't start weakening yourself. You don't start weakening the people struggles you have put on your head. I mean, you say you are fighting for. Because the destruction of basic infrastructure in the South is, is like a self, uh, uh, it's like somebody cutting his own nose in order to spite, to, to, to spite it. And that, that doesn't, uh, go away and it will not even, uh, in the long run, promote the cause 
on which either I pop, mass up, or any of these other uh, uh, self determination groups are fighting for. So I appeal to whoever may be behind the destruction of public infrastructure in the Southeast. So please think deeply about the consequences of those actions and not to stop it in fourth way. Like I said, on one of these your platforms, that we should learn from the example of uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi. We should learn from the example of uh, Martin Luther King that it is possible to achieve independence, it is possible to achieve self determination, it is possible to set our people free by using the victim of uh, non violence to achieve our goals. But um, so, Tunde Kolawale, if you okay. also, I mean, talking about not using violence and uh, following the patterns of, uh, you know, all the persons who have actually fought for self-determination and self-governance, IPOP, the IPOP leader, I mean, as it's been believed, Kanu, Namdi Kanu, has also said that those who are perpetrating this evil are masquerading, they are impersonating IPOP and are carrying out all of this violence and so uh, w what do you have to say about this? Because it's been made to believe that IPOP is responsible for the violence that's been experienced in the southeastern part of Nigeria, but you have a disclaimer that has been put out prior to this time. Well, um, it's uh, unfortunate and very, very tragic. I should think it was the way IPOP began its campaign, especially when he started having the Eastern Nigeria Security Network and um, prisons were being attacked and some other places, uh, for public places, being taken down. The signal and the messages that we were getting from IPOP at that period in time gave people the impression that IPOP was behind all those uh, activities and all that. But the truth of the matter is, since IPOP came into existence, some other groups have also emerged in the Southeast. In fact, before I probably had mass up and some other splinter groups all over the field, all of them geared towards securing independence for the people of Southeastern uh, uh, Nigeria. Well, you should also know that uh, certain persons also engage in this criminal activity, not just in the Southeast, but also in the Southwest and also in the North in another part of the country. Of course, the horrendous violence that the so-called bandits are inflicting on northern Nigeria is there. You also know at the time, certain tribes were said to be engaging in kidnapping and um, cutting rustling, also in the southwest of Nigeria, India. So, violence begets uh, of violence. And a society that wants to develop, that wants to know peace, that wants to grow, that want to solve the problem of unemployment, shouldn't engage whatsoever in the destruction of public infrastructure. Because public infrastructure is the foundation upon which the society is made. And I will also appeal to the federal government to look into the case of Mr. Namikano and resolve it politically. Right. Namikano's case is not a case to be resolved by the court. It's a political case which the court has no business meddling with. If you are able to unravel, if you are able to solve, if you are able to address the economic um, scandal and some of the fundamental issues that have been, that have been raised by IPO and some of these other services and major groups all over Nigeria, I am sure the country will be on the path to make it progress. All right, thank you, and, Barista uh, Enjoy peace. Thank you so much for your thoughts, uh, Tunde Kolawale, legal practitioner. Thanks for joining us on Off the Press this morning. Thanks for having me. All right, so that's the size of um, this particular segment. Uh, we will take a break, but not before telling you what happened um, this day in history. We'll come back into our first conversation for the day. Do join us again.